Could you please welcome to the stage the Professor of Law at Trinity College Dublin, Owen O'Dell. <laughs> Well, those are two very hard acts to follow. I'm not even going to try. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, okay. So we've had three academics and I'm the fourth. If you put, I don't know, if you spent some of Anya's time with Brendan's doll, you'd probably end up with some of Kevin's mutations. <laughs> but it would be fun. Right, um, I'm going to talk about um, copyright and the copyright term, which is life of the author, plus 70 years. And so let's start with the idea of the author, okay? Um, we might think of copyright in terms of the starving artist in the garret and we get Lab OM, but really, just so long as you have done the work yourself, then whether it's um, artistic or musical or literary, uh, you'll get copyright in it. Um, the, the idea is that you as an author have to produce something original. Now, you don't have to be Shakespeare, which is good, because nobody is Shakespeare. Um, some of my friends in the English school tells me Shakespeare wasn't even Shakespeare. Um, all you have to do is do the work yourself. It's got to be your own skill, labor, and judgment. It's got to be your own intellectual creation. It means you haven't nicked it from somebody else. You've done it yourself. So think about that. Um, if you produce a single word, is there skill, labor, judgment, and intellectual creation in the production of a single word? Well, if you've got a toddler repeating the same word repeatedly, there is no skill, labor, and judgment, but somebody here tonight knows a word that is copyrighted. Okay, Yahoo isn't copyright, it's, uh, it's probably a uh, registered design or a trademark or something, but it's not copyright. You can get the registered design simply by registering it. You can get the trademark simply by registering it. Coca-Cola, you know, Yahoo, very... Um, Bright Club should probably be a trademark, and if it isn't, I'll, we'll, we'll, do, we'll, we'll sort it out later. Okay, uh, which means it's copyright and licensed. Spots, okay, single word, that's copyright. I beg your pardon? Uh, nice word, but no, it's not copyright. <laughs> I'm going to start singing. And there's nothing worse than, than a, you know, if there's anything worse than a lawyer trying to be a comic, it's a lawyer trying to be a singer. Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. Um, the, because of the skill, labor, and judgment and the creation of that word, uh, the U.S. Court of Appeals has held that, in principle, it is capable of attracting copyright. Uh, and that copyright is currently, if it exists, owned by Disney. Uh, but let's think about um, infinite monkeys with some of Anya's infinite time on infinite typewriters typing infinite bullshit. Or the Christmas exams I've just finished correcting. <laughs> or a Donald Trump speech. Um, there's no skill, labor, and judgment in that. I mean, there's loads and loads and loads of words, but, or letters, or characters on a page, but there's no skill, labor, and judgment, and so there is no, uh, there's no copyright. So copyright doesn't, is, isn't a function of the amount. Size doesn't matter, as Anya told us earlier on. Um, copyright is a function of skill, labor, and judgment, and it's very easy. Once you write a paragraph, it's copyrighted. But there are lots of things we do every day that we might think are copyright, but aren't. Lots of you have been taking photographs. I see nobody has been trying to take photographs of me, but lots of you took photographs of, of Brendan's set. Um, <laughs> and some of you probably took photographs, you know, Brendan behind you, you in front, and tried to get Brendan into the shot and Brendan's friend into the shot, um, and you into the shot, so it's Brendan and Angelo and you. Um, and, uh, you know, you want to put it on uh, one of Derek's websites. Um, you know, the ones where he said you want to observe but don't want to be a participant? Those websites. Okay, so you take your selfie. Okay, you're taking your selfie. You're trying to stretch your arm and get the face and, you know, get the smirk. And you press the button. And you don't fall over. Uh, and then you post it on Twitter or Facebook or Flickr or wherever. There's absolutely no skill, labor, and judgment in pointing and clicking. Sorry, Sandra. Yeah. <laughs> now, Sandra's doing a lot of work. 
she's got a really good camera and she's framing the shots and she's judging the light and so on. So there is skill, labor, and judgment in what Sandra is doing. But there's no skill, labor, and judgment. Bradley Cooper got um, Ellen DeGeneres' phone and scrunched a lot of his best friends into a shot and took a photograph. And it was the photograph that broke the internet, or at least the photograph that broke the internet before the, the photograph of that unfortunate person's bottom broke the internet. Um, and there was this big post-Oscars um, discussion, not just about the red carpet, you know, who had the nicest frock and who wore the most stupid hat, Farrell, um, yeah, and who should have won the Oscar and uh, who was snubbed. Not Oscar so white that year, Selma was snubbed, but at least it was um, uh, nominated first. Um, so, uh, but one of the questions afterwards to keep the Oscar buzz going was, who had copyright in the Bradley Cooper Ellen DeGeneres photograph? That was a really big thing. Okay, it was a really big thing if you were a lawyer. <laughs> and it, in my view, I mean, Samsung said they had it because they were the sponsors and they provided the camera. Who knew that if you were a, a famous multi-million uh, dollar earning actor going to the Oscars, you got goodie bags with several thousand dollars worth of goods in the goodie bags, and one of them would be Samsung's top of the range camera phone. Um, so that's where Ellen DeGeneres got the camera, on the phone from Samsung. So Samsung said, it's our camera, it's our copyright. And Ellen said, no, you gave it to me. It's my camera, it's my copyright. And Bradley said, it's my arm, it's my thumb. It's my copyright. And the Kodak Center said, you did it in our, in our theater. It's our copyright. And the Oscars people said, but you did it at our event. It's our copyright. Uh, all out of step except me. I'm here to tell you they're all wrong. There's no copyright. There was no skill, labor, and judgment in stretching his arm and pressing the button. And there wouldn't be, even if the um, uh, infinite monkeys um, on the infinite typewriters, with Anya's infinite time, produced infinite garbage, and somewhere within it, we found the complete works of Shakespeare. Um, you know, they, they, I've told you that their, their infinite garbage wouldn't get copyright. They still wouldn't, even if they produced the complete works of Shakespeare, in part because there is no skill, labor, and judgment there. And in part because in the land of the free and the home of the brave, it is also the land of the lawyer and the home of the stupid judgment. They have actually litigated this kind of question. There's a macaque um, monkey called Nauru, uh, who was playing with a photographer's equipment. Guys, that was my best line. <laughs> okay, that was my second best line. That was my best line. Um, Okay, so a photographer had left his camera down. Uh, he was out photographing in the wild for National Geographic. He had left some of his cameras down to set up a shot. And when he turned around, the troop of macaque monkeys that he was going to be shooting had found some of his cameras, a bit like the one that Sandra's using right now, and started playing with it, pressing the button and pointing and clicking and so on. And um, very, you know, this is a, a situation where size was everything. The, 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 the memory card in the camera held 3,000 shots. And they filled the 3,000 shots by keeping their finger and tossing the camera over and back. And when he got back to camp later on that night, he discovered that there were some really good shots of the macaques. And he published one of them in National Geographic. It's this toothy image of a grinning monkey. You might know this. And PETA, the People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, decided that um, um, Nauru, the macaque, obviously owned the copyright in the photograph. He took the photograph. <laughs> It's a really famous photograph of himself. It's a selfie. Um, so it's the monkey selfie. Now, not to be confused with the monkey trial in Scopes in 1922, back to Kentucky again. Um, th this, is the monkey, th this is the monkey selfie trial. And even in San Francisco, which is where you would probably have found the most amenable judge, uh, he wasn't able to keep a, keep a straight face while he was saying, originality requires an author. <clears throat> a person. Um, so the legislation requires a person. Uh, the monkey isn't a person. Uh, uh, the, there is no copyright here. Peta, go away. But in fact, there is no copyright there anyway, because even if the monkey could be a person, for the purposes of the law, we could probably say that. Given some of the people I have seen sitting as judges, that wouldn't be so difficult. Even if 
uh, the monkey could be a person, there was still no skill, labor, and judgment in the photograph in the taking of the monkey selfie. So two reasons, no skill, labor, and judgment, no author. Actually, speaking of monkeys, Donald Trump. Um, you know that, that my wife tells me that um, there was a monkey in San Diego Zoo when George Bush was president that had a higher IQ than George Bush. Um, I looked it up today. It's apparently an internet hoax, but I really want it to be true, um, which is a bit like my students writing down answers. This is not the right answer, but I want it to be true. Um, so. Um, Life of the author, we've talked about the author, plus 70 years. The way it works is this. If I die now, on the 1st of January next year, plus 70 years, my copyright runs out. So I have my copyright while I'm alive, while I'm an author, and then my family and my estate has it for a further 70 years. Uh, so um, James Joyce died in, 19, in January 1941. So 1st of January 1942, plus 70, gives us James Joyce comes into the public domain on the 1st of January, uh, 2012. Or we can go backwards. We can say, well, 1st of January, 25, uh, 2016, that brings us back to 2015, minus 70 is 1945. So let's think, who died? Who was famous in 1945? Derek? Derek, where are you? Yes, your, your, your favorite starving Austrian artist died in 1945. A couple of other people died in 1945. Um, Anne Frank died in 1945. So that would be a, gre a really interesting dinner party, wouldn't it? You know, um, Adolf Hitler and Anne Frank. Um, the Bavarian government owned an, um, Adolf Hitler's copyright for the last 70 years and didn't publish Mein Kampf. Um, and uh, last year, when it looked like the um, Anne Frank Foundation was about to lose um, copyright in the uh, diary, they decided to make the argument that, in fact, the version of the diary that's been published has been edited by her dad. He didn't die until 1980, so his copyright doesn't expire until 2051. So we still can't download and, and read the Anne Frank diary, um, uh, but we can download and read Mein Kampf. So Derek is going to have a very happy evening um, reading his favorite Austrian um, uh, author's um, scribbles. Why is copyright so long? Why is it life of the author plus 70 years? In the States, it's life of the author plus 90 years, 95 years, 120 years. Those of you sitting in the front row will see what I'm wearing. I'm wearing a t-shirt with Mickey Mouse on it. And the reason why copyright is so long in the States is because the Disney Corporation have this idea that Mickey Mouse should never drop out of copyright. They have the further idea that uh, the definition of an honest politician is a politician who, once bought, stays bought. So they buy the politicians to buy the copyright extension. The last guy who did that was Sonny Bono. He extended copyright for, um, uh, for Mickey Mouse, and it means that supercalifragilisticexpialidocious is still in copyright. Thank you very much. <laughs>